There you are. Oh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Get everybody in. Welcome to worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. My name is Carol Manny, and I have the pleasure of leading you um, in the service today. Um, today, I have with me uh, Peoria businessman and philanthropist, Bob Woolsey, and I'll introduce him more a little later. So to get started, we the members and friends, children and youth of this congregation, strive to live into our mission of embracing freedom, loving inclusively, growing in mind, body, and spirit, and adding to the health and wholeness of the world. In living our mission, we are mindful of those who came before us. This is the ancestral home of the Peoria people. They aided the European settlers who came down the Illinois River. We offer our respect to the Peoria people for who they were in the past and who they are today. For those of you who are visiting the congregation or new, we welcome you. We hope you feel comfortable and welcomed um, if you're here try and catch up with me after service. And if you're online, if you could send an email to the church office. Okay, after service today, we celebrate the wonderful, terrific, amazing Amy Pop. So <laughs> make sure you stay. Fellowship Hall, I heard there was ice cream. All right, please stand as you are able, and we're going to sing. Now, we've got videos today for our songs. Rose is not here. Kind of. So we have videos. So come on up, and we're going to sing some songs that we know. This is Come, Come, Whoever You Are. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, Lover of leaving Houses no caravan of despair Come, yet again come Come, come, whoever you are Wander, hush, whoever you are Jane Maudlin, for our community gathered here, for the spirit that called us together and drew us to this place, we give thanks this day. For moments we have shared with others, for times when we have reached out across barriers of distance and fear, for times when others have reached out to us, for moments when we have disco discovered another along our path, we give thanks this day for this community of celebration and growth, introspection and solitude, and for those moments of that peace which passes all understanding. We give thanks this day for our gathering out of distant places where our weaving together out of many separate selves, this hour of celebration and worship, we give thanks this day. And I wanna invite Amy and Mitzi up to light the chat.
In faith, together, we light this small scrap of light, symbol of grandfather son's enormous power, whose energy burns so brightly in these days of deep summer, catapulting the leaves and vines, vegetables, flowers, and fruits to astonishing size, lengths, and heights, spilling over the tops of cages, walls, and trellises, delighting and nourishing all beings. We bask in the warmth and the heat of these days with lightened hearts and quickened senses in gratitude and in faith. I want to invite Molly Rose up for the story. Good morning. The tree stood in the middle of the village. Its trunk was so large that it took six people holding hands to reach around it. The roots were strong and wide, and its branches spread out over the village square, offering shelter from the rain or shade from the summer sun. Its fruit was juicy, sweet, and plentiful. The people of the village loved the tree. Children played beneath it and climbed in its lowest, branch, lowest branches. Young people knew that if you whispered your dreams to the tree, they were more likely to come true. People who proclaimed their love or friendship for one another beneath its branches found their relationships to be nourishing, and elders discovered that their sweetest memories could be counted on when they were near the great tree. The tree had been witness to so much, and when the breezes blew through the leaves, one could hear echoes of generations, laughter, conversations, dreams, prayers, songs. Animals loved the tree too. Rabbits lived in burrows under the roots, squirrels and monkeys lived in the branches, and bats and birds flew in to eat the abundant fruit. The tree seemed to buzz with life. One day, a traveling merchant arrived in the village he rested in the shade and ate two pieces of delicious fruit. This fruit is incredible, he said. I would like to have some to sell in the next villages that I visit. Who owns this tree? No one owns this tree, replied a villager. If anything, we belong to it. Well then, if no one owns the tree, then no one will mind if I pick the fruit, said the merchant, and began to fill a basket. I mind, said the villager, and today I am the keeper of the tree. What do you mean, keeper of the tree? We each take our turn being here with the tree. We could never own it. We are here as protectors, as sustainers. That's ridiculous. This tree doesn't need you. You could just take what you need, take what you want. The tree will continue. But the villager couldn't be persuaded. Sir, this tree isn't like that. We don't come here to take from it, even though we receive much. We are keepers of the tree because this is where we are nourished. This is where some of our most precious memories are and where our people have dreamed. This is where we remember who we want to become. Well, said the merchant, you may think this tree is very special, but it still doesn't need you to sit with it. That's preposterous. Ah, replied the villager, the tree itself may not need me, but what of others who come by? Just this morning, I sat with a woman whose heart was heavy with worry. Had I not been here, she would have had to carry that weight alone. And this afternoon, a tired couple came by and they rested with me. They said they had been looking for a place like this. And then an elder came by and we watched the birds in the branches together. And now you are here. You were confused about what this tree is and how to be with it. Imagine if you had arrived and not found anyone here to talk with. You might have continued thinking that everything you do is all about you. Luckily for you, my friend, I'm here to let you know that when you care for the tree of life, it becomes about so much more than just you. And the merchant sat for a while in the shade, thinking about these ideas that felt new and a little challenging. As the sun went down, he picked up his bag and headed out of town, whistling a song that he hadn't thought of in years. On his way, he shared a smile with each person he met, his heart feeling strangely light and joyful. And the people of the village, they continue to sustain the tree of life 
to care for one another, and to share their gifts with grace and gratitude. And may it be so for each of us. Okay, our invitation to offering today is from Victoria Weinstein. The purpose of the church is to encourage all who gather there to grow more generous in spirit and in action. This is the great end of all the world's faith traditions, to bring human beings closer to the divine by acts of creation and compassion. We now take an offering that allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit. And after the ushers pass the plate, you may feel free to come up and light a candle for anything that is in your heart, um, on your mind. If you're joining us online, you may light a candle at home. Okay, the gifts of the congregation will now be uh, accepted gratefully. Joys and Sorrows. Ours is a welcoming community where we find connection, a spiritual community where we find meaning. Ours is a sharing community where our joys are amplified, a caring community where our sorrows are lessened. We take this moment to reflect on our joys and sorrows and acknowledge the mutual support of our community. I want to offer up some words of joy this morning. Um, just in regard to Amy and her years here. That's a very joyful thing, and we look forward to going and congratulating her and telling her about all the wonderful things that she's done for us. Our sorrows this morning, we um, think about the friends and family of Barbara Lichterfield, who passed away um, recently. She, you might remember Barbara. She came every week with Meryl Foster, um, she passed away on July 20, 20th, I think. So for all of her friends and family, 
We also um, care for Tom and Sandy Crow. Tom's father passed away. He was 99 years old on July 23rd. And um, Mary expressed a concern for her friend, Jen, and their family tackling some heart issues. So I'm sure you have people in your heart who you think about. Um, so it isn't always said out loud, but we know that everybody carries those things with them. So um, this is a reading from a woman who talks about John Wesley, the Anglican priest, and the founder of Methodis Methodism. He was known to ask his participants in small groups, he would say, so beloved, how is it with your souls? That is a completely different question than how are you? How is it with your souls? So she says, in response to this question, is anything like mine? I want to invite you to pause as you read this. Take a deep breath, say a prayer, sing a song, light your chalice, feel the force of gravity pulling us all towards the same center. Whatever helps you feel more rooted and less alone. Now do it again and again and again. And once you feel that rootedness and connection, hear this. You are loved beyond belief. You are enough. You are precious. Your work and your life matter, and you are not alone. You are part of a we, a great cloud of witnesses, living and dead, who have insisted that this beautiful, broken world of ours is a blessing, worthy of both deep gratitude and fierce protection. Our ancestors and our descendants are beckoning us, compelling us onward towards greater connection, greater compassion, greater commitment to one another and to the earth. Together, we are resilient and resourceful enough to say yes to that call, to make it our life's work in a thousand different ways, knowing that we can do no other than bind ourselves more tightly together and throw ourselves into the holy work of showing up again and again to be part of the building that world which we dream of but have not yet seen. So when you talk about uh, showing up, I think of our speaker today, I wanna introduce um, our speaker, Bob Woolsey. He's a Peoria businessman, he owns Jones Brothers Jewelers. He is also a philanthropist and is involved in many, many, many things. Um, and when he's involved in something, it is everything from the funding to the being there when there's demolition to the every, every aspect of it, he gets behind. And so I consider him a person that walks the walk. And I think what has been so interesting to, about Bob to me over these years is that he's an incredibly positive, person who actually lives gratefully, believes in gratitude and lives that way. And so I think that embracing gratitude can change your whole life and your perspective on everything. So let's welcome Bob to tell us a little bit about gratitude in his life. That's good. Yeah. Got to lean it up a little bit. Not as vertically challenged. Just kidding. Um, so, December 27th, 1989, I was a junior at Richwoods High School on the swim team at swim practice when the phone call came in that changed my life and my family's life forever. My mom said it was time to come home from practice that I needed to be there. And I knew exactly what had happened because my dad, two weeks prior, had told me that he was severely depressed and that life was no longer worth living. So on the ride home, I kind of contemplated what life was going to be like without a father. It was a short ride, five minutes, but a very long one. And uh, what I got to see um, the day of my father's passing at the house 
was the amount of people in our community that lean in at the time of crises, whether it was his friend Gary that brought five different flavors of coffee cake because he didn't know which one we would want, whether it was my friends that came over to watch a movie that night, my grandpa being very upset with the police for not pronouncing my last name right or his last name right, and many other things. And the one person that I can say that impacted me the most that day, which has really set my trajectory to where it is and where it's going, is my football coach, Rod Butler, who as a junior at Richwoods, um, we, had a, we won state sophomore year. We um, lost in the semifinals my junior year. And we had a really good program and I wasn't exactly the star player, so I didn't even know that he recognized my presence as good coaches tend to do, um, at least back in the 80s. So um, he leaned in that day, put his hand on my shoulder and never left. So what he taught me was the importance of leaning in, especially at a time of crisis. So I like to talk about a, an acronym, and I like to use these little whiteboards. Um, has anybody heard of the term or the concept VUCA? Allie knows it because she works with me at the store. It's a concept that would describe what December 27, 1989 was for me and my family. And it's probably a good way to describe what is going on consistently. If you want to put the first slide up, my friend. So VUCA stands for volatile, <clears throat> uncertain, chaotic, and ambiguous. I might have spelled that wrong, so I can hold it up for the uh, people up there um, that probably can't see it because it's blue. Um, VUCA is a world that we can be consumed by. VUCA is a world that is all around us, and we tend as human beings to allow that negative to stick to us much like Velcro. So what you have here is a picture of three houses next to um, a church that actually used to be a gymnasium. It's right across from the Proctor Center on the South End. And if you've never been to the Proctor Center, I suggest going by and taking a tour. They have one of the coolest pools, gyms, cleanest grounds, and one of the nicest areas. And it's uh, in the south side of Peoria. Um, VUCA, as I said, is something that sticks to us. VUCA is something that is, you know, relatively the icky stuff that we can get consumed by. Now, there's a way to overcome the VUCA, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So, I'm Bob Woolsey from Jones Brothers Jewelers, and uh, I have three children and kind of a fourth, which you'll see a picture of later. Uh, my son, Bennett's 20. Um, my middle son, Charlie's 17. My daughter is 15, and Martise, who we brought into our family two or three years ago, turns 18 tomorrow. Um, during the summer of 2020, our country, our community, and everywhere was very volatile. VUCA was kind of running wild. And I reached out to a close friend who introduced me to Pastor Riley, who happens to be the pastor at the, the church. And I asked him, what can I do or what can we do to help you? And he said, knock down these three houses and put in a park because while we have the beautiful grounds of Proctor, um, we don't have a private place for families to have funeral receptions, family reunions, weddings, different events to effectively be safe, to be somewhat private and to have a really beautiful place. And he said, knocking down three houses and putting that in place would make all the difference. And uh, I love the, one of your principles here that, uh, oh my gosh, I can't read it now. The, what's the I word? The, the worth and dignity of every person. What's the, the worth and dignity of every person. yeah, but what's the adjective? Inherent, there we go. The inherent worth and dignity of every person. What I learned in the conversation with Pastor Riley was that we tend as humans to have the answers to tell people what 
needs to be done to solve things. And what I found in that conversation was my thought of what needed to be done was very different than what he, who is a part of the community and part of the South side of Peoria and part of all the VUCA that was going on wanted to be done. And he simply said, knock down three houses and put in a park. And I said, that's way easier than what I thought it would be because knocking down three houses and putting in a park is all about working with the city and knowing people within the city. And, uh, it's worked really well. So in the whole scheme of things, the VUCA that surrounds us, the volatile, uncertain, chaotic, and ambiguous world that we live in can be combated by one thing. And I will say that that is gratitude. So in our world, the negative sticks to us. It's all around if we allow it. A place like this your daily practice of focusing on gratitude can create more of a Teflon effect versus a Velcro effect. The Teflon effect allows the negative to hit you and bounce off, whereas the Velcro effect just allows it to stick. So if you could put up the, the second chart, I'll go through kind of a practice of gratitude that I call the red box uh, transformer. And it kind of gives you a little bit of a roadmap of how to move a very negative situation into a positive one. So the red box experience that I always use is you're driving somewhere, someone cuts you off, they're obviously in a big hurry, and it just kind of sets your day off the wrong direction. That would be kind of that VUCA that just we've all dealt with at some point. Another perspective on that would be, whether it be through just quiet contemplation while driving, prayer, meditation, whatever, is to recognize that that person who cut you off is obviously en route to the emergency room because someone in their family has obviously had a tragic accident and they need to get there so that they can see them before they take their last breath. There's a way to transform a really red box situation and move it into something positive. So. The red box would be like not gratitude. As a parent, sometimes our children are not always grateful. They have expectations, so that can be a red box experience, or they can be big red box experiences like the passing of a loved one or you know, the violent crime that persists in our community in different areas. So that's the not gratitude. Most important step to recognize it and pause, whether it's through Breathing, prayer, meditation, whatever um, your choice. And then you move up the levels of gratitude. And the first level of gratitude is a basic level of respect. Now, I like to tell the story of during 2020, when the different lootings and everything were happening, I got to know the chief of police, Chief Meriden at the time. And I said, why is our community faring so much better than other communities around the country. And he said, as the chief of police, I've always said that a baseline level of respect, whether it be officer to community or community to the officer, is the foundation of how we run our department. And so he used an example um, as he'd made his way up the ladder. He started in the Taft homes as an officer, and he was coming back to the police um, headquarters as a sergeant, and he heard a call that there had been a shooting in the Taft homes. And there were two young officers he pulled in, and uh, they said, there's been a shooting, nobody here will talk. And so he went and talked to two ladies, the chief did, and, and they immediately told him where the young man was, and he found him. And the young officers were like, how did you accomplish something that we've been trying to do for over an hour? And he said to the young man, he said, I created a basic level of respect in the Taft homes when I worked here with the citizens and the community members that live in the Taft homes. I respected them, they respected me, and the two women that told him where the shooter was, actually, when he became chief, posted on Facebook how grateful they were that he was going to be the chief of police. So that base level of respect, that please and thank you, that lowest level, is really a great place to move to from that red box experience after the pause. The next step, which is that appreciation piece, is where the park comes in and where kind of my mission and vision for our community and our world is, and it's in potent gratitude. So 
The appreciation piece is, what are the many things in these situations that we can be grateful for? So the positive side of potent would be the P stands for people. The O stands for opportunities. Uh, the T stands for things. The E stands for experiences. Um, the N, which you all are really familiar with here, would be nature, which you have beautiful grounds out there. I love the green and all that. And then the T would stand for thoughts and ideals. So one of the greatest ways, and Carol had asked me, you know, how do I get past when it's hard to be grateful? Well, in a daily practice of journaling, meditating, or whatever, and focusing on the potent gratitude every morning before I go into work, that creates my day in a place of gratitude, which allows me to start the day in appreciation. If things start to get a little VUCA or a little messy, I tend to go straight back to journaling on what person am I grateful for? What opportunity am I grateful for? What thing am I grateful for? And so on. There's another side to it, which is um, kind of a, a unique part of potent is that there's a dark side of potent that in any negative thing, we can still be grateful. So whether it's a problem, an obstacle, trauma, um, existential crisis, nature, transition. I mean, there's a lot of really challenging things that we face, like when my father passed away, that looking back, I learned about leaning in. I learned about what people do at times of crises. I learned about how to help people when they're going through similar situations. So even in the negative of the potent, you can find things to be grateful for. And then the highest level of gratitude, which I think um, your community is really good at, which is generosity. And that's the, the, as you move from that red box experience up to respect, appreciation, and then you can actually start to give and actually start to become generous in that situation. You can give your hope, your energy, your attention. There's many different resources you can give. You can give your money. You can give your time. You can give your grasping of technology, which I am not a tech person, but those two gentlemen back there can make us all look good because they're good at technology. And then your time. And so to me, when asked these different questions about, you know, how do you stay grateful? How do you get through tough times with gratitude? How do you combat the VUCA and really become more Teflon to it where it bounces off versus the, uh, the sticky Velcro? And it's really through going through this practice and having a daily practice of gratitude. At Jones Brothers, we start every day asking everybody what they're grateful for. If you start to ask your community, your family, um, where you work every day what they're grateful for, you find out what is the most important to them and it allows you to have a higher level of relationship. So where am I now? What's the plan? Go ahead and put the picture up of our family. So these are my, uh, my people. So the redhead on the, that would be the right, is uh, Bennett. He's 20, um, going off to school to come work at the store at some point. Uh, Martis, uh, we brought into our family three years ago after he had some challenges with uh, some decisions he made in Peoria Public Schools. And uh, he's actually moving to Arizona Friday. He turns 18 tomorrow. Charlie on the far left is a senior and uh, he will be going off to college after next year. Edie in the front is my daughter. She's going to be a sophomore and my wife, Mia, of 23 years. And uh, that is my family. And uh, we really have a unique group. And uh, I think that the, the thing that I learned from my dad's passing and when the problems occurred with Martise, who played basketball with my son, was when you lean in in an area where it's uncomfortable, you find that your world can just be completely opened up. So with Martis um, and his family, that's how I met Pastor Riley. That's how I became very close friends with Hetty Elliott. That's where a lot of um, opportunities to get super involved in the south side of Peoria and all the, the fun VUCA that goes on down there. Uh, it's wonderful people, wonderful trees, wonderful nature, wonderful energy. And uh, it was the leaning in at a time where, you know, do we move a six foot three, 280 pound kid with a lot of energy into our house? 
or not. Um, we chose to, and forever that has made the difference. So I'll leave you with a few things that are going on in Peoria. You can go to the last slide. Uh, we have actually done the de demolition of the houses. Um, we're in the process of the, uh, the park being built. It's not going to look like that. There's going to be a huge pavilion. So if you go down and see um, Proctor Community Center and see the pavilion on the Proctor side, we're going to have one as well. Um, and while it will be public, it will be private for, I mean, if your congregation wanted to have an event down there in the, the green of the south side of Peoria, you could certainly do it. Um, families will have funerals, um, family reunions, weddings, and our goal is to really make it a community place. And we've named it Potent Gratitude Park um, after Potent gratitude, which is all the different things that we can be grateful for. Um, we're working with Bradley and I think it's Arts Alive. The whole side of the church that you can't see that will face the park will be a mural um, that will be provided for by the artists in our community, which will be all about uh, gratitude, which is really, really cool. The people in the south side are putting together ideas that they will be growing or be putting together from a... Uh, art perspective and it'll be huge, probably like the size of the, the back of here. And uh, so that should be done in September. So I invite you all to come down. It's uh, amazing when you decide to have lunch with someone that, and you ask that question of what can we do? And two and a half years later, our community has gotten together to make that happen. Um, and my final vision, as far as leaning in with Potent Gratitude, if you want, go to potentgratitude.com. You can share a positive story about our community, about your community here. Anything you want, you'll see the different stories. It's, it's a place to me where people can just go and present the positive things because there are so many things positive going on in our community today. Um, at Jones Brothers, we continue to work to grow our Core values are love, learn, share, earn. The love piece leads with starting each day in gratitude. And my goal of growing our business is growing it so that we're able to impact and give back more to our community, which Carol's daughter, Allie, is on the board of Family Corps. And we have many others in our uh, organization that are involved in many different things in the community. That's something that I, I really like to see and I want to continue to make an impact. So what I leave you with today is know that the world can be filled with VUCA. It's okay to not read the news, to turn off the TV, and to walk around in the woods and enjoy the, the beautiful things that are out there. I mean, there's, there's so many wonderful things. And uh, while we recognize that VUCA exists, the antidote is gratitude. So if you would like to take the concept of potent gratitude or the concept of the levels of gratitude or the concept of really creating that, that wall of defense against the challenges that exist, I just challenge you to reach out to potentgratitude.com. Um, Carol will send my information on if you'd like a PDF of that slide of the levels of gratitude or anything that you want to bring gratitude to your organizations, your family or whatever, that's what I stand for. And I appreciate you all for uh, having me out today. And if anybody has any questions, I'll be back um, in the fellowship area after service. I do want to say, um, Bob mentioned a volunteer opportunity that um, takes a lot of commitment, but I did want to bring it up. And that is that some of the violence that's happening on the South Side, if I understand this right, they're doing, you know, the police will be there checking things out. And um, the, that area is pretty restricted for a while. Well, you have kids that live in that those houses and in that area and they need care. Would that be, yeah. So if someone, and you never know when it'll be, but they need people to help out um, to care for these kids during periods of time when there's um, some crisis at their house. So if you're interested in that, let me know and I'll let you know. Perfect. Okay. All right. So uh, as flame is to spirit, so spirit is to breath and breath to song, 
Though we extinguish the flame in this sanctuary, may we tend it in our hearts until we meet again. Oh, we'll do the hymn. Let me extinguish and you can do the hymn. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks for being so easy going, Colin. Okay, now we'll sing the hymn. What is it? Oh, now let us sing. So now let us sing. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the hope within. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the hope within. Now let us sing, 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 sing. Now let us. Sing, sing, lift up your voice, be not afraid. Now let us sing to the power of the joy within. That was great. See, I needed an extra second to get ready for that. Um, By Cynthia Landrum, we leave this gathered community, but we don't leave our connection, our concerns, our care for each other, our service to each other, to the world, and to our faith continues. Until we are together again, friends, be strong, be well, be true, and be loving. <laughs>